Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac, and today Apple released macOS Sequoia 15.2. macOS 15.2 Sequoia released around the world at the same time for everyone, as long as you're on a macOS 15 supported device. This update brings many new features and changes and came in at 1.51 gigabytes for me on my M4 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro. It can vary in size depending on which version you're upgrading from and to, or whether or not you're coming from a beta to the regular public version or not. Now this update was released alongside many other updates with iOS 18.2, iPadOS 18.2, and updates for tvOS, HomePod OS, Vision OS, and more. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll click the Apple, go to About This Mac, and if we click on Sequoia 15.2, you can see the build is 24C101. This particular update brings features along with Apple intelligence features, and I'll separate those out below. Depending on your region, you may not have those just yet, but you will need an M1 or newer Mac to have Apple intelligence features. If we go into our launch pad, you can see there's a new app here called Image Playground. This allows us to create different images and these are images it created on my iPhone. Now you can't use brand name images. So if we go in here and we wanted to maybe show an image of a Ferrari or a Ford or anything else, it won't show brand names, but you can maybe describe something, a race car on a track in the rain and it should create that for us. We also have the option to add a person here but we can swipe through or go through the different options it's showing us or change the actual style altogether. So if we want it to be an illustration, it can show us that as well. So you have the option to switch back and forth. Maybe we want it in the city in a racetrack. You'll see it creates it there. So you have a bunch of different options, but again, you can't use brand names. You can also copy, share, save the image or report a concern. These will sync across iCloud. So they show up on your iPhone or iPad. If you have an Apple intelligence supported device. And again, you have a bunch of different options down here with suggestions. So you can show everything from an adventure to maybe costumes, accessories and places. So this is fun to play around with. I don't know how useful it will be long-term, but if you want to create an image like this, you now have the option to do that. You can also do this within messages. So if we click done and close out of this and go into messages, you'll see I've created a few right here. And if we click the plus button, we have the option to go into image playground. Now, one thing we don't get on the Mac for some reason is the option to use Genmoji. We've got some Genmoji here that were created on the iPhone while they'll sync across devices. You can't create them directly right here but you can create an image right here. It will open up basically a smaller version of image playground. And then when we can create whatever we'd want, maybe a lighthouse on a rocky beach in the rain, and then we can change it from what it was and it gives us a different image. So if you want to use that, click done, it will put this in your options here, your images, and then you can send that. So that's available directly in messages as well. Another update we get has to do with chat GPT. We can see this by going into our system settings, going to Apple intelligence and Siri. Then if we scroll down, you'll see here we have chat GPT. Now, the first time you click on it, you'll have to activate and set it up and you don't need a chat GPT account in order to use this. You'll see it integrates with Siri. You can compose text and writing tools and it works with a chat GPT account. If you want to use that click next. You'll see you're in control. You don't have to use it at all if you don't want to. And if we don't sign in, we can use this, but we may have a limit here. If we want unlimited, then we may need to sign up for an account, but now it's active and you can use Siri for this. So if we wanted to use Siri and say a pizza recipe from chat GPT, it will go out and find that working with chat GPT. Give it just a moment here and it should come back. Now it can take a few seconds. You'll see here we have a pizza recipe and it gives us the information instructions on how to prepare the dough, add the sauce, use cheese and more. So this is something that you can actually do with chat GPT or just directly in Siri, but you now have that option. Again, the same thing is available in notes for writing tools. And this is actually one that I had chat GPT create already. So if we highlight something, you'll see design and build of the iPhone 16 pro max, we can option click or right click, but also you'll see it just shows up automatically where we have a little icon here. We then can describe a change that we want to make, or we can proofread it, change it to friendly, professional, concise, or even compose something entirely different. If you want to describe a change for iPhone 15 pro, it will go out 
and then try and change that based on the iPhone 15 Pro. However, it doesn't work on every single request. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. If we open up a new one, we can then go in and maybe click this icon here again and compose something entirely new. A comparison between iPhone 14 and iPhone 16. And then it will go out, get the information, but you may have to check this information to make sure it's accurate. So there we go. It says design and build, performance, camera system, battery life, and then it compares them. So you can see all of that information here, which as long as this is accurate, should make life a lot easier if maybe you want to know information. If we close out of this, we also have a new option for AirPlay. So maybe we want to send the information here over to a Mac or something else, maybe another display, maybe an Apple TV. You'll see here if I send it maybe to, well, send it to this one. Give it just a second here. Now we have some new options. We have the option to show the entire screen, just a window or app or extended display. This is sort of a preview that allows us to see exactly what we're going to share and then we can set a default. So if we wanna select a window or app, we can then choose the window or app. So maybe we want to share, let's share the app store and then we can mirror this window to another device. So this is really convenient. Make sure we know exactly what we're sharing or we could cancel it altogether. So it's very nice to have that option here. So again, you can just go into your control center, go to screen mirroring and either turn that on or off or disconnect entirely. So it's a nice little update there with some more options. We also have a new option for our menu bar with weather. If we go into our system settings and then we go to control center, scroll all the way down, you'll see we have weather. We now can show this in the menu bar. So when we show it in the menu bar, it will give us our current temperature outside. We can click on it and see our forecast, see different areas that we may have set in the weather app and add other locations as well, or just open the weather app. So it's got a feels like temperature and it's just nice to have up at the top if you want to use that. Another thing that's been updated is when you're connecting to a Mac. So maybe you're connecting an iPhone to a Mac and it needs to authenticate to allow you to use it on the Mac. If we plug in my iPhone here, go ahead and unlock here. You'll see I have to allow it on the screen. And then once it's allowed, I can trust the computer and now I can use Face ID to trust the computer. I no longer have to just put in my passcode. So it will now allow me to do that. Now, if you're using your Mac with a Vision Pro and you're using it as a monitor, there's now support for ultra widescreen and higher resolution. It looks much, much better compared to what we had with previous versions. You will need Vision OS 2.2, but we can have a super ultra widescreen display in an ultra wide display or just our regular normal display. So it's a really nice update that gives us a much larger display to use. Audio will now come through the Mac to the Vision Pro as well. Before you only got audio through your AirPods directly in the Vision Pro and the Mac was separate. Now they're combined into the same audio stream. We also have an update with Siri for natural language. We can now use natural language in music or TV shows. If we go into the music app, if we go to search, maybe we can search for calming music. I used this example before from 2002. We can use natural language to find that music and you'll see release year 2002 and some calming music. Now it may not get this right, but you can at least use natural language to figure this out. What would work best for you? Again, the same works in TV as well. So we'll go into TV best movies of 2003 and see what it comes up with. So there we go. We've got movies from 2003 and it gives us a few options. So it's a nice little update where we can just speak to it naturally when we type or speak using Siri. Within the Photos app, there's some updates as well. Within Photos, on the left, we have our utilities and under utilities, we can now see favorites. So they've added that option. They've also added the option for recently saved and recently viewed photos to be removed from history. So if we option click or right click, we can remove all from recently viewed. Some small little updates here, but it's a nice little convenience change. If we go into Safari, we have an upgrade with the wallpaper. We have six new wallpaper. This is a new one here, but if we click on edit in the bottom right for our start screen, we have a bunch to choose from now. So there's six new background images if we want to use those. There's also an upgrade for HTTPS security where it will try to use secure HTTPS on all websites. 
There's also a simplified version of importing and exporting. If we go to file, you can import browser data from a file or folder or export directly from here or import from a browser that's already installed. So they've made this a little simpler. If we go to import, we can choose a file or folder that we want to import directly into Safari. And speaking of wallpapers, if we go into our system settings, they've added a few here if you don't have them already. Within wallpaper, if we scroll down, you'll actually see the new iMac wallpaper. So if you want to use those, they're all available here now, and you can see all of the other Mac wallpapers here as well. So if you want to use those, unfortunately, we didn't get any real new ones for the new MacBook Pro. We basically just have Pro Black, but we do have new ones for iMac, and it actually says iMac. You can see that traced out here. Now, another change they've made has to do with Find My. This is a really nice upgrade. So if we go into Find My, Within Find My, if we have an item selected, we can option or right click on it and get directions to it. But if we go into it, click on the I, we now have the option for lost AirTag. We can share the item. You'll see I already shared this in an example earlier, but if we share this, we can now share it with a link. So maybe you're trying to find a bag in an airport. You can share it with someone at an airport or someone that you trust in order to find the location of the item. Then of course you can share with the link here. It expires or you can just stop sharing altogether. So that's something that you now have the option for that should make finding things a little bit easier if you're using an air tag or something else that can be found in items within podcasts. There's a couple new updates here. If we go into home, you'll see that we have things that we might like, and it will actually personalize search based on what we've looked at before, for example, technology. So this will be personalized specifically to what I'm looking for, where it gives us the most relevant categories and editorially curated collections tailored for me. You'll also see that we can add favorite categories up here in the upper right. We can click the little star and then favorite that. So if we go to categories on the left, you can see our favorite categories. There's an update for news. So if we go into the news app within news on the left, if we go under puzzles, we have a new option for Sudoku. There's three different difficulty levels as well now. So you now have the option if you want to use those. If we go into stocks, there's an update and we probably won't see this now. It depends on time of day, but there's now an update where we can see the pre-market price quotes in stocks under NASDAQ and NYSE prior to opening. So they'll show up here if there's a pre-market value to be shown. There's also some bug fixes in this update. However, Apple hasn't specified really what they've fixed unless we go to the release notes. If we go to the public facing release notes, and Apple recently updated their notes for macOS Sequoia 15.2 RC2, and you'll see they resolved issues for Accelerate, ActivityKit, Authentication Services, ChatGPT, Kernel, and much more. Unfortunately, they're not giving us a ton of information in the actual public release notes on the release itself for some reason. They're just telling us about new features. They really need to explain what they've fixed as well. These are the public facing release notes, but these are not really easily accessible to someone installing the update unless you know where to go. Mac OS 15.2 Sequoia also has some security patches. On Apple's security release website, if we scroll down, you'll see all of the releases from today and you'll see Mac OS Sequoia 15.2. If we scroll through, you'll see there's quite a few security patches here, everything from disk utility to image IO to kernel and much more. If you're wondering how to read this for passwords, for an example, it says an attacker in a privileged network position may be able to alter network traffic. To fix this, this issue was addressed by using HTTPS when sending information over the network. And then it gives the CVE number with the person who may have submitted the issue. So this is great. Lots of different patches here and definitely worth updating because of this. Now, when it comes to the overall performance of Mac OS 15.2, it seems to be pretty good. I've used it on a MacBook Air M2 as well as this MacBook Pro, and I've had no issues whatsoever. I've heard from some others that there's been no performance issues either, whether that's either running a game or using it for Final Cut Pro. I was using this the other day with Final Cut Pro and Vision OS just to see what it was like, and it seems nice and fast, no issues whatsoever. However, when it comes to battery, battery seems to be pretty good as well. Standby is pretty decent on these last few betas and the RC. So I would expect it to be the same, but you'll see this computer doesn't stay plugged in all the time, but you'll see the last 10 days here. We have some usage of a couple hours probably, but the overall battery health will be 100% as this is a newer Mac. But in general, it seems to be a little bit better, more refined than what we had before. If you're wondering if you should install Mac OS 15.2, 
I would definitely recommend it at this point. You get some additional features, bug fixes. It brings it up to the standardization of everything else and seems to be working pretty flawlessly for me. It works well with things such as Final Cut Pro, Craft, Photos, Pixelmator Pro, and everything else I regularly use. And so that's everything in Mac OS 15.2 Sequoia. Let me know if you've found anything else or noticed anything different if you've been using it. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper for the iPhone in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.